Rub your hands together briskly. What do you notice? They become quite warm. Friction generates heat. And you'll notice the same sort of thing if you rub two rocks together. They also become quite hot. Well, below the Earth's surface, here in the North Island of New Zealand, there are huge slabs of rock, huge sections of the Earth's crust that are slowly grinding past one another, generating enormous amounts of heat and also releasing magma, molten rock, from below. And so you get sections of the Earth's crust where you can see evidence of this. You can see jets of steam, hot springs, mud pools. This is a geothermal area. Geo means Earth, thermal means heat. And the Maoris have used this geothermal energy for hundreds of years to wash themselves, to cook, and to heat their homes. Well, about 30 years ago, here at Wairaki, they decided to build a geothermal power station to take that steam and to use it to produce electricity. The first thing they have to do is to drill for steam, and they use a drilling rig which is very similar to that used when drilling for oil. That's a wellhead, and in this case they actually went down about 600 metres into the Earth's crust. What 600 metres? Well, I'm sure you've seen a picture of the Empire State Building, that's about 300 metres tall. Imagine two of those, one on top of the other, that's how far down they had to go. Well, the steam and water come up to the surface, very hot water, and they have to separate these out. They want the steam, they don't want the water. The separation begins in that curved pipe there. Because water is heavier than steam, it tends to hug the lower part of the tube, whereas steam goes in the higher part of the tube. And then that mixture goes into this vertical cylinder here called a cyclone separator. And the steam and water whiz around the inside of that. Once again, because water is heavier, it sticks to the outside of that chamber, whereas steam stays in the centre. Now the water is waste. What do they do with that? I'm glad you asked. That's taken down through a pipe at the base, along there to those big things there that are steaming away. They are called silencers. You see, what happens is much of that wastewater boils away and steam returns to the atmosphere. The main thing that's needed to generate electricity is dry steam. And that comes out through this pipe here and travels along a very long distance. Now you know what happens when you heat metal. It expands. A long piece gets longer. And with more than 10 kilometres of metal pipe going down there, you can imagine with steam at close to 200 degrees Celsius, the expansion rates could be absolutely terrific. And if you took a metal pipe, held it at both ends and made it expand, it would have nowhere to go but bulging out to the side. The steam pipes would rupture, there'd be terrible trouble. So what the designers have done here is really quite clever. There, there, and there, they've built in little concertina sections. This is actually known as an expansion loop. It's rather like building in the loop first. Now, if the pipe expands, it doesn't blow out sideways, it just flexes at those points, at the top and the sides. And that way, the whole thing remains stable and safe. So one hazard is averted. But there are hazards of a different kind in all this. When the steam gets to the power station, it's got to be absolutely dry, free from any water that would damage the engines. So at the loops, and between them, at intervals along the pipe, there are water traps. Water drops into them by gravity and is blown off by steam pressure. And that way, the dry steam goes on its way. Then comes the problem of using that steam to produce electricity. This is a steam engine which was designed and built in England about 50 years ago for that purpose. And it's the first steam engine that was used at Wairaki. When they were building the main power station, this was being used to drive all of the machinery. Steam comes from the wells down through this pipe here and into these cylinders, forcing pistons up and down. They're connected to another set of cylinders, pistons up and down once again. And they are connected to this large, heavy flywheel which spins around. The waste steam is taken off through a pipe and out through the roof. Well, the heavy flywheel is connected by a shaft to this generator, and it's a bit like the generator on your bicycle, only much larger. And when that turns around, it produces electricity. In this case, about enough electricity to power eight to ten normal houses. You can't normally see the turbines and generators because they're completely enclosed. Those machines down there with the big blankets over them are the turbines and the machines with the green coverings are the generators, the parts that produce electricity. Well, in the Waraki power station, the total output of electricity is about 150,000 kilowatts. 
What does that mean? Well, it's about enough energy to keep 2,000 cars driving on the road. That's an enormous quantity. And the electricity produced at this power station is fed into a national system which supplies electricity to the whole of New Zealand. And steam keeps passing through these turbines 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for three years, producing electricity from the generators to which the turbines are attached before they need to pull down the turbines and service the blades. But the story doesn't finish there, because the steam that has passed through the turbines is still useful. It can be cooled down with water from the nearby Waikato River and changed from a gas back into a liquid. When this happens, there's an enormous drop in pressure. A vacuum is created, and this vacuum is used to turn a completely new set of turbines which produce still more electricity. Every industry has its wastes, and this is no exception. And here, there are two main wastes. One is the amount of sediment that there is in the water, and the second is a vast amount of heat that's also in the water. It's surprising, really, how much material is dissolved in the water underground. But as you take the heat away from the water, by taking the steam off, it's all deposited, it's thrown out. And so in kilometres of drains like this, the water is run through, piping hot, and all the stuff is deposited on the walls. You can see, if I drive this stick down there, I'm breaking it away. That's mostly silica, and there's masses and masses of it all being thrown out. Well, fortunately, these drains can be dried, the material is scraped out. You can see piles of it behind me, and that's used for landfill. There are now experiments to take this water, because it still contains many impurities, and pipe it back underground, back where it came from. That makes it a renewable resource. But still, there's a lot of heat to be got rid of. Fortunately, there are some industries that can use it. Nearby, it's piped through exchanges so that the heat can be taken off to use in drying lucerne and drying timber. And there are some industries here that otherwise could normally only survive in the tropics. One of them is growing orchids. Another is this. Thank you. These are freshwater prawns. That's the male with the very long nippers, and that's the female. Of course, they're not that colour in life. When they're alive, they're this really beautiful greeny blue. Now, these are a real delicacy. You would only expect to find them in restaurants like this, because they have to come all the way from the tropics. These prawns require a water temperature of about 30 degrees, and round here, the lakes and the rivers only get up to 20 if you're lucky. So prawns like this simply couldn't survive in these waters. At least they couldn't, till someone had a bright idea. They took the waste hot water from the geothermal power station, put it into pipes, and ran it through some of the locally occurring ponds. And now these prawns can survive well and become a local industry. And so instead of having to go to the tropics to get these now, you can just pop down the road. And that's not a bad end result for a waste product. Cheers. Oh,